welcome to the biggest solution in the universe, the show where we discuss every solution in the universe from abortion to soap with over 3.5 <laughs> million downloads. This is the only show where you decide what should or shouldn't be on the big list of solutions. I am Maddox. With me is Dick Masterson and Sean, our audio engineer. Hey. Welcome well, uh, back. Yeah. Closer. Uh-huh. Abortion to soap. Abortion to soap. We'll get a Z out of there someday. Yeah. Well, Xenophobia. Gonna, that's going to be our next solution. It starts with an X, but that's so close. Closer, so close. Closer. Phonetically. Z- zoophilia. Yeah. It doesn't have to be alphabetical. It could be in scope. Scope rhymes with soap. Anyway, guys. Welcome back to bonus episode number, this is nine, nine. right? Bonus episode number nine. Wow, nine, nine of these. Thanks Almost. for hanging in there. Thanks for buying them. Almost. Uh, no, I'm going to say you're welcome. Oh. You're welcome for the quality, the caliber of show that we do. Dick and I and Sean, we work our asses off. Yeah. So I'm, gonna, I'm going to say you're welcome and I will take the thanks. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Maddox, for making this possible. <laughs> you're welcome, Dick. All right, let's. We get- don't need to talk about last month, do we? We do. Who cares? Let's talk about <laughs> the solutions from last not month. Not a Dick. contest. Yeah, it's not. No, it's not a contest. That's true. Critical thinking. Okay, that was the solution that we brought. That, that I brought, you brought in. in. Yeah, critical yeah. thinking. That the the uh, the, the I, essentially I I boiled it down to asking the asking questions. Always asking questions, right? Challenging assumptions. Yes. Challenging any stat or fact that's given or any any thought that's presented as obvious, challenging it, breaking it down and being a total obnoxious prick all no. the time, basically. No. You fucking anti-intellectual. You're already pushing it. Okay, and then boxes. Boxes was my my other solution. Boxes. People thought that was a solution. Can I read you a comment about that? Well, hold on. Let's get through this uh, this list, Dick. Then it's a funny cuteness. comment about boxes. Okay, what? Uh, Joe Farrar. Dick and Maddox arguing about the definition of a box is akin to that post from Bodybuilding.com where the gym rats argue about how many days in the week there are. Yeah, great. I got a follow up to that, but I'll get through this list first. Cuteness. Cuteness was the other solution you brought in, Dick. That came in third uh, as a solution in the positive territory. So people thought the uh, cuteness was a solution. God stupidly. damn it, here it comes. And then the corporation The was greatest a invention humans have ever conceived of. Yeah. Got in the, was it in the negatives? It was in the negatives, yeah. Jesus so people thought Christ. it was a problem. Cuteness beat out a, the corporation? Uh-huh. Cuteness. Yeah. You guys, that says something about you guys voting, okay? Mm, yeah. You think cute shit is more important, is a bigger solution than the legal entity of the corporation? Well, I got a comment from Adam James Osborne. He says, Dick, bringing in corporations as a solution could have been an outstanding choice. Oh, fuck. If you did some fucking research and brought in a cogent argument, you keep giving me intellectual blue balls by doing the shit. It's like two tugs and out the door. Look, 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 look. Here's the, here's the thing about bringing in something like the corporation. As this, as exhibited by this show, 50% of people think that corporations are bad. I'm not pitching this to people who already know they're good. I'm trying to change minds here. Yeah. I'm trying to help you. Anyone who voted down the corporation, you got to change your thinking, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, th- that, that kind of thinking is not going to get you ahead in life. you yeah. got to understand what a corporation is. Yeah. And you are the best person to do that. Uh, clearly not. Clearly, <laughs> clearly not. Someone else made a, made a comment. There were, some, there were some really cogent defenses of corporations in the comments. And I thought, wow, these are actually really good points. And I actually agreed with them. And Great. I said, well, too bad Dick didn't bring any of that shit in. Because <laughs> oh, I would have been on more on your side, Dick. What were they? Uh, I, don't, I don't remember. I think about? someone, like, I think someone essentially said that corporations allow for the type of investment you get into new technology that you wouldn't get otherwise. Oh, I said that. Mm-mm. Basically, no. I basically said that. You basically didn't. And then uh, I got a comment here, Dick. Uh, uh, this is from this was on Twitter from at Kilo seven seven seven. He says, "Gun control, no problem. Boxes, controversy time." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because we argued so much about boxes. And Dick, I I made these comics. I don't know if you remember these. Take our boxes these over comics. our dead, over our out of our dead hands. Oh yeah, <laughs> I I kept talking about boxes all weekend. Everyone was annoyed. But I, I really, I think boxes are awesome. Everything, there's so many boxes. Bo- there's metaphorical boxes. There's boxes we live in. There's boxes we shop in. Yeah. So I made these comics and I posted it. It's called The Adventures of Dick in a Box. And <laughs> <laughs> Sean, in the first panel, they're, they're all three panel comics. The first panel so, shows a judge and he says, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, please take your seat in the jury box. The mm-hmm. second panel shows Dick sitting back saying, uh, actually, your honor, it's not a box unless it has six sides. And then the judge looks at you like an idiot. 
Oh, wow. That's a great joke. Yeah, it's a great watch, joke. Watch out, Garfield. People loved it. <laughs> yeah. This coming from a guy watch who defines out, a Davis. box. All boxes must have six sides, Here right, Dick Here comes Dickhead? Maddox. Yeah. The, the second, the second adventures of Dick in a Box shows a kid protesting with his parents uh-huh. at some at some rallies. Says no big box stores. It shows Dick. Uh, there's no such thing as big box stores. Stores aren't boxes. <laughs> and the kid just staring off into the distance. So your punchline on all these comics are they people looking at me with a dumb look on their face? Yeah, essentially. <laughs> Okay. That's the punchline for all these. Because you were calling a box without a lid. It's a, a tube. You said it's a, a square tube. What Sean Sean stores all of his audio equipment in a squ- in a plastic t- metal tube in uh-huh. a server rack. Yeah, it's server racks have box. lids. They have lids, dickhead. Just because the lids aren't on it right now doesn't mean it's not a box. Wow. Yeah. I don't know. Ask the expert. Ask the audio engineer. You, he, I assume he went to some kind of schooling for audio equipment. Would you consider that a, a sound box? It's just called a rack. Yeah, there it's just go. called a rack. You, you know you what, go. dickhead? After that episode, I went and I Googled it. I checked Google Images. I typed in server rack, and of course, this exact server rack came up, this box. Yeah. But then I, t- I typed in server box, and the exact same thing came up, too. The same exact box. It's called a box or a rack. You guys are being pedantic as fuck. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, we're we're the pedantic ones. <laughs> yep. That's right, Sean. You said that sarcastically, but I took it literally. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> Hero. Oh, Dick, uh, I got before a we comment. Go on, for, oh, you want to do yeah, this? Yeah, before we okay. go on, we need to mention we got this back in March. A fan of ours sent us a really good gift. Anthony. Anthony, a.k.a. Call the Cops, I-D-G-A-F, which means I don't give a fuck. Yep, call, on the, Twitter. call the Cops, I-D-G-A-F. He sent us a board game. A board game based on the biggest problem in the universe. And, and Dick, I got to say, by far, this is the most impressive, comprehensive involved gift I think the show has ever received. Well, it is because it's not the craftsmanship of the board per se, because it looks like it was made by a fifth grader. Right. Would you agree? It's a, the a, an advanced fifth grader. Sure, like yeah. one of the kids in like an advanced studies where they get yeah. to take an hour off every week and pretend that they're getting enriched in another class. Yeah, one yeah of those th- kids. this kid this kid is definitely a candidate for a satellite school. He didn't get in but he's definitely a candidate. Maybe he's at a Montessori school. <laughs> I'm not throwing that out. However, what impresses me incre- the most about this game is the cards. Yeah. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, a curling track. It's a, the board game has spaces that curl around uh, you know, the, the board, but it's driven by this stack of cards, and every one of these cards is a different reference to the show. Oh, it's insane. There's, a, there's probably a stack of 200 of these cards... And we're going to be playing this throughout the show. He even went to as much trouble as to make the chips. There's four playable chips. Mm-hmm. One with my face on it, one with Dick's, one with Sean's, and one with Boisterous Coconuts, our own Asterios Coconuts. Let me read you one of the cards that he's yeah. got here, just for, just for a taste. And we have um, four players in the studio today. We're joined by a guest today who's just, uh, who's just listening in, and we're going to be playing this. We do. Uh, here's one of the cards. You listen to the erotic lactation story, and it brightens your day. Move forward three spaces. You deliver a knockout punch to a pedo priest. Move up four spaces. You successfully talk your girlfriend into getting an abortion, (laughs) saving you approximately $245,000. I hope that's true. It sounds true. All right, right. Let's uh, let's not spoil all these cards. These are some really good good cards, good references to the game. Uh, So we're going to be playing that. So the, the rules of the game, essentially, I know you guys aren't playing along at home because there's only one of these in existence, unless he made an extra one for himself. But uh, essentially, we draw a card. It tells us the number of spaces to move, and then there's a drinking game involved. So we have in the studio, we, ha- we, we all have beers. Well, most of us have beers. There's the three of us, and this, uh, this episode, we're joined by my brother-in-law. Yeah. Colin. Colin, welcome to who's, the show. Who's a big fan of the show. I don't know if he could prove it. I would like you to prove that, because you would say you're a big fan of the show, correct? You know what? Let's- Here's a, let me have a trivia question for you. What's the stupidest thing Maddox has ever said on this show? Okay. <laughs> That's bullshit. You know what? I'm just fucking tired of this shit already. Already. Cancel this bonus episode. You don't cancel the season. All right, who wants to be who? What right, PC I'm, I'm, be? I'm going to be Maddox. That means you get plus four strength and plus four stamina. Ha, huh, just plus four? Yeah. Is that four out of a, t- a total possible two? I don't know. Who wants to be me? Uh, the only qualification is that it cannot be played by a female. Mm, okay. Sean, who do you want to be? Well, that means you can't play. You want to be you? You want to be me? You want to be a stereo? Well, what kind of powers do I get? There's, there's none. Oh, you okay. get no okay. powers, yeah. Sean. Fine. Okay. You want to be Sean? I'll or be me. 
You'll, You'll be, be you. you. Okay. okay. Colin, who do you want to be? Boisterous. Boisterous. Okay, Colin is be boisterous. Me. All right. So uh, the uh, rules go- are, as stated by the rules, is uh, Maddox goes first. Yep. Then me. Cool. Then Sean. Then Asterios. Why? Because fuck you. That's why. That's what I don't call the cops. I don't give a fuck. So All right. I drew the first card. It says, you deliver a knockout punch to a pedo priest. I Move up that four one. spaces. Well, why didn't you put it at the bottom, I dickhead? I did. <laughs> You put this at the bottom? Yeah. It, well, then why was it right on the fucking top? Shuffle them. Why was it right on the top of the, the, the deck here? Wait a minute, wait a minute. What did I tell you before we started the game that I think there's two decks of cards here? I You said that. Do you remember that? Yes. And what did you say? I said no. No, Once probably I not. said, I think there are because there's like a community chest and a chance uh, square where it looks like two distinctly different decks are supposed to go. Okay. And what did I just cut to? You a card cut that to a looks different deck. exactly like what I was talking All about. All right, dickhead, go ahead. We got it. Then there's a bunch then of them. Put those, then put those. Then put those in the other pile. All right. Everybody, hang on for 15 minutes while we sort this out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cutting this deck. Sure. I see you over there, shadily shuffling cards. That wasn't shady. The way I was shuffling the cards. I shuffle the cards like a pro. Go ahead. All right. I'm drawing a card now. It says, you and three friends remake Ghostbusters. Each <laughs> male player moves up one space. All that's, right, everybody. That's everybody. We're all yeah, on the same space. Like, and we're all, here, I'm going to put myself on top of all the other chips. Here's mine. You attend Burning Man and dodge getting an STD by using a condom. Oh, you fucked up. Uh, uh, there, yeah. is no, there is no net gain because condoms are terrible. Don't move. Well, um, not a lot happening in this game so far. Sean? Here's yours. You just did a shot of fireball whiskey. Oh, <laughs> yeah, boy. With an winner. exclamation point. Cool. If you're Maddox, <laughs> stay right where you are. Otherwise, move up three spaces. Oh. oh, whatever, Sean. This game's bullshit. Sean, that means you're on a drinking space. You're on a drinking space, Sean. You have to pull a drinking card. Here's what it says. Social, everyone have a sip of beer. You won, but your dad is also the coach of the baseball team. Maddox, that was a quote for me. I like that. Okay, we all take a sip, a sip of beer. That's a quote from you saying what? You're talking about your dad being a coach of the baseball team? I remember it was during an episode where I talked about how, I forgot exactly, but it was some benefit, some advantage that you that a kid might have mm-hmm. uh, for, for winning something, but it oh. didn't count because it's, it's essentially like having your dad be the coach of the baseball team. Oh, you sipped that beer. I'm going to tell you how awful it is to have your dad be a coach of your baseball team. Huh, go on. My dad, he was the coach of my baseball team, and he would run my ass harder than anybody else on the team. Like really? he was trying to prove Oh yeah, like he was trying to prove a point. Well, it was brutal. That didn't work. So dads, <laughs> if you're listening, don't cuz I don't think my dad listens to bonus episodes. Don't ever be a coach of your kids' baseball team, please. All right. Well, let's uh let's move on with the show. Well, well, Colin you go, I didn't got- get to go. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> okay, Colin. Here. I'll read it for you. Uh Dick's Burning Man friend my man gets you involved in a drive-by shooting by a drug kin- kingpin. You are dead. Oh. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> wow. Talk, talk about scratching on the eight ball right out of the Colin's game. Colin's out of the game already. <laughs> you blew well, Colin, it. Colin. You made it one s- space into the game, Colin, before dying. <laughs> that's, the, that's the game, man. Oh, man. Anything what a great can game. happen. Life or death. I do have a man update. I'll save it for next time. All right, time. cool. It's a, it's a pretty spicy one. I got a comment from Phony McGee. Sounds like a real name. He says, that you, <laughs> Maddox, for a quick rant on comic... Uh, he says, oh, he says, that you, Maddox, instead of thank you. That's why it's so confusing. He says, th- that you, Maddox, for a quick rant on Common Core hating idiots. Dick, please bring in Common Core as a problem so I can hear you suck ass your way through it. Okay. Good. Bring Hello. it. I got another comment from Benjamin Cisco. He says... Chons, he spelled your name, C-H-A-U-H-N. Chons burn at an hour, 10 minutes into it is the funniest thing he's ever said. Now I want to hear it in cool voice, Sean. Wait, what was it? You said, uh, I'll bring it in next time. You told, you told a guy who called in and told you to go fuck yourself. You said, here's what you got to do. You got to try oh. to jerk off, go back down to your basement, try to rub one out before your mom gets home to make you dinner yeah. at 6.30. Right. And you can tell her you've been looking for a job all day. It was pretty great. I, I forgot it was on the bonus episode. Yeah. yeah. I'll yeah. get Cool Sean to read it next time. That okay. was Angry Chon. Angry Chon chiming in in that, uh, in that episode. That's so, that was great. I got another one from Sean from Justin Zerjev. Sean's porn name, The Butterfingerer. <laughs> Gross. That's great. Ed Stone I says, it. I listened to this earlier today and I had this really burning comment on my mind about why Dick is a moron, but I forgot why by now. So fuck you, Dick. 
<laughs> yeah, that's a real fuck you to Dick hey, when here, you forgot. Here's a solution, uh, Ed. Yeah. A pencil. Writing it down. Go vote it up. Huh. Dick, you that doesn't count. You don't get to bring in a, a, a third sneaky weasel solution in this episode. Justin Maine says Maddox questions everything, and Dick questions Maddox. I guess that means Dick is the biggest critical thinker in the universe. That's oh, yeah. true. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I would call Dick, a big critical thinker. Um, I got a comment from Robert Wankia, another real-sounding name. Mm. I just had to look up the Harlequin typer ichthyosis disease after being told not to. Holy shit. Yeah, I took... I'm not warned. I, I told I you guys. I told you guys not to look it up specifically, and I described it specifically so you wouldn't have to look it up. It's mm-hmm. awful. It's awful. It's All right. Up. That's the voicemails. I didn't yeah. bring in that many. The solutions episode is always a real crapshoot for voicemails because I collect them as the month goes on. Yeah. So now I'm looking at them. I have no way to tell what they are. All right. Uh, except for what I've named them. And this one is named Fart Box. <laughs> okay. Could be anything. Hey, Maddox. This is Dan Coulter. Just want to let you know you forgot <laughs> the most important kind of box. The fart box. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, there is a fart box. Uh, yeah, that's what you do. Fart box. You tongue punch a fart box. <laughs> oh, maybe you do. <laughs> Not me, man. Hi there. This is Hank from Texas, Colin. I'm a longtime fan. Oh. No matter. Good. Hank Hill. I know it was a haul ago, but I have to express my appreciation for you bringing in picking ass as a solution. I think you'd be hard-pressed to find a problem that couldn't be solved with a good old ass kicking. For example, I'm going to kick your ass if I hear you talk about that god dang Oculus Rift one more time. (laughs) What kind of grown man fantasizes about sitting on his computer playing a video game? And Dick, Uh what's up with your problems lately? Uh Netflix? Why don't you try bringing in a real problem like charcoal? Or that god dang bastard gas butane. <laughs> and for crying out loud, go fuck yourself already. That doesn't, uh, Yankee wouldn't say that. I like it. I'm going to give him a pass, except for his hatred of the Oculus Rift. All right, you want to do some solutions, or you want to we'll take another spin on this board game? We'll take another spin <laughs> on the board game, then we'll get to the solutions. Go ahead, it's your turn. My card says, you successfully make a shame shamer look like a fucking tool on Reddit. Move up three spaces, yeah. Mm. Here we go. And uh, it's, it's a, a drinking, drinking card. Yeah. Here we go. I pulled a drinking card. The drinking card spaces, by the way, have my face on them. I Pretty. don't think there should be games that are not also drinking games, Yeah. by the way. Like well. Cards Against Humanity, I'll bring that in as a problem at some point, but I would be more excited about that game if it was part drinking. What about Russian Roulette? I thought that was only a drinking game. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it says, uh, Waterfall, you start, go counterclockwise. Puffy clouds of meat, just bulgy. It's too much. Maddox, that was a quote from me again. Oh, uh, waterfall? Waterfall. I don't, so know, waterfall. Just, I don't, I don't know. know. We're just taking a drink. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Getting real, uh, real shit-faced on this show, guys. You avoid getting type 2 diabetes by not eating so many fucking fries. Move huh. up three spaces. Another, uh, another damn, drink. There's a lot of drinking There in this you go. Game. Social. Everyone have a sip of beer. Another another one of these, huh? They're All like right. red kryptonite. It's a different kind of kryptonite. It makes Superman go horny as fuck. That was Apparently a you I quote. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. Colin, you remember that? That was one of my favorite quotes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Sean, your turn. You can read it. You save fifteen percent on your car insurance by lying to your claims adjuster. Uh, if you're Dick, move up five spaces. If you're anyone else, move up two spaces. There you go. Sean, were you are you Dick's chip? No, you're no. He's Sean. No, you're Sean. up. You should have picked me. Yeah. Go. Uh, all right. Let's get to the solutions. Yeah. All right. Uh, damn, lying to your insurance adjuster should be a solution on the show. Mm. Have you ever done that? Mm, no. Many a year ago, I was applying for health insurance, and I put on the form a surgery that I had had like ten years before that, mm. and the amount that I got quoted back was in the thousands. It was like it was ridiculous. It was like Cobra ridiculous, where right. no one, a, a human, couldn't afford it. Right. So I resubmitted it without that. Boom! Instant health insurance. Hmm. I resubmitted it without the listing without, like so you prior. Just yeah. Yeah. Huh. So do it. Yeah. Well, you don't have to anymore because of uh, Obamacare. You oh. can't be denied pre-existing conditions. I wasn't denied, but it, the price tag on it was exorbitant. Uh, that's that's. I love that about Obamacare. It, yeah. it was the problem wasn't getting denied. It was that they put a couple extra zeros on it. Yeah. They could still do that. Okay. That's right. true. Here's right. my here's so my first to, solution. Yeah. What's your first solution? GPS. GPS? Yeah. All right. That's a good solution. What's uh, what's up with that? Originally designed for the military and intelligence applications at the height of the Cold War in the 60s, with inspiration coming from the launch of the Soviet 
spacecraft Sputnik in 1957, the Global Positioning System is a network of satellites that orbit the Earth at fixed points above the planet and beam down signals to anyone on Earth with a GPS receiver. You know how we got GPS? I do. Do you really? Yeah. Who Do you know who we have to thank for GPS? Russia. Ronald Reagan. No, oh, you fucker. No, we don't. Yeah. It was Russia, dickhead. No. Yes. It was Ronald Reagan. Wrong. Why was it Russia? Because the first satellite that went up in space was Russian, right? The yeah. Sputnik. Sputnik, yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. So there were a bunch, of, a bunch of students. I think they were at MIT or Berkeley or something, and they were sitting there tracking the the uh, the satellite up in up in the sky right as it was going around and mm-hmm. it, I think uh, this American Life or, or uh, Radio Lab one of these one of these something podcasts, on NPR something on NPR recently yeah. did that's why I know this uh, so they were listening to this thing this beacon and they figured that well they can hear the pings from the satellite they mm-hmm. know the approximate uh, distance that it's at and they can they figured they can calculate the speed at which it's going around the um, around the Earth right. or or maybe they had the speed and they calculated the distance somehow if you have two of those variables you can calculate the third. Well, they, the military was interested in this application. They said, well, you're able to calculate this. You're able to know, pinpoint exactly where the satellite is. Can you do it in reverse? Like, if you had a beacon on Earth that was pinging a satellite, could you tell where that position was? And they said, well, it, theoretically, we can. And so the first instance of it was uh, uh, on a submarine because they had these really expensive submarines, and they didn't know exactly where they were in the ocean. Uh-huh. So that's why they invented GPS was to track submarines. Not fucking Ronald Reagan, dickhead. Okay, well, let, let's take it. <laughs> this is like, that's like the guy who discovered that round rocks roll down hills Uh, the man who turned that into the wheel yeah ronald reagan (laughs) all right so when it started yes they could calculate their position every hour and it it works it works opposite they get time codes from gps yeah and calculate their position based on that like satellites just sit up there broadcasting their time all day but after after the ussr your buddies the communist russia shot down a korean passenger jet flight 007 oh interesting in 1983 the reagan administration uh opened up gps for civilian use so that wouldn't happen again wow how about god for ronald reagan Reagan. wow maybe i should have just brought him in as the solution but maybe yeah yeah he's he's as responsible for gps as al gore is for the internet no i'll give you that yep you know what else reagan did gay marriage he got gay married. Who, who appointed the swing vote on the Supreme Court? Yeah, that goes either way. Uh huh. He's channeling Reagan from beyond the grave. Wasn't Kennedy. it? Wasn't the vote six to three, Dick? So it wasn't a swing. No, it, it was five four. Split. It's five four. Was it five yes, four? Yes. And Kennedy is the one that swung it. Yeah. To pass. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not Reagan. Not Reagan. Reagan didn't do that. Who did? The uh, the Supreme Court ruled based on I think the Constitution. So. Okay. Yeah. You say potatoes, I say Ronald Reagan. Yeah, you say Ronald Reagan. Yeah. All right, that's that's my solution, GPS. Where would be, where would we be without it? <laughs> we don't. We actually don't know where we would be without it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is the most. It's the most useful thing there is. We literally don't need maps anymore. Yeah. Like hundreds of years of human evolution and exploring the planet were based on maps. Uh-huh. We don't need them anymore. Yeah. Can you imagine a, a, a bigger leap? And a bigger technological leap than we don't, we no longer need cartography. I can think of countless bigger technological what leaps. What is one bigger solution Co- than GPS? Computers, internet, cell phones, radio waves, S- cell phones, electricity. But GPS is only good. There's no downsides to GPS. Yes, there are. It's a pu- What's a downside to GPS? You can be tracked and stalked. You can be harassed. You can be spied on. How's that, dickhead? You can't be spied on just because of GPS. Well, someone can put a tracker on your car. The FBI can. The CIA can. They can find out where you are at all times, at all locations, at anywhere on mm. Earth. All right. That's a good point. Oh, okay. Anything else? What else you got for GPS? I brought in mostly things about Reagan. Okay. <laughs> to be honest. Tax reform. you he, Did you know Reagan-ite. that Reagan wanted to uh, reform taxes such that a return could be done on a postcard? Great. Do you know that? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm for that. That sounds, that sounds arbitrary- that sounds arbitrary, but I like I like the concept of trivializing tax returns. Yeah, um, he also he ended the Cold War. Did you know that it wasn't Rocky? It as Rocky IV okay. would have you believe it was All Ronald right. Reagan. I didn't believe it was Rocky for a minute, Dick. But uh, no, Star it, Wars. Yeah. You heard of that? It wasn't entirely Reagan either. It was it was actually because it was mutually beneficial to end the Cold War. Earthquake research, climate studies. Outdoor treasure hunting games known as geocaching. Yeah. These are all things that you can do with GPS. Yeah. Yeah, well, good good solution. Yeah, you can play games and 
play grab ass. And and Ronald Reagan, I like that you ascribe this this wonderful technology to, to a politician. Reagan. To a politician. Well, he's an actor, also an actor. An actor turned politician. Yeah. Sorry. Two the the two best things you can be. Yeah. Politician and an actor. The hey, two most useful things you can be in our society. Hey, why didn't uh, why didn't Ronald Reagan use GPS in that Star Wars program? Remember the Star Wars missile defense system that we had? Whatever happened in, to that? They're in space. What uh-huh. do you mean? Yeah. That's yeah. why. Oh, oh really? The satellites. Yeah. yeah. They would be in space. You can't use uh-huh. GPS in space. Yeah. Did, do you think he used GPS to to uh, calculate the trajectory for the laser beams that he was shooting to shoot down uh, missiles? No. No. Probably not, huh? <laughs> I don't think that's possible. What? Yeah. what why? What do you ask? Oh, just curious. Whatever happened to that uh, Star Wars missile defense program? Was it worked. That- Oh, it oh, ended yeah? the Cold War. Oh, that's what it's, ended the Cold War, it, huh? Um, it, scared, it scared Russia into surrendering the Cold War. Ah, simple dick in his simple mind. It's true. Simple world. That's absolutely true. Uh-huh. Uh, what else do I got here? Oh, do you know how, you know how time works? I'm going to explain this to everybody listening because I know you're going to say yes, no matter what <laughs> I ask about relativity and satellites and time. So this is, what, this is what makes GPS awesome, right? The atomic clocks on the satellites work on a different time than the clocks on the Earth. Okay, how specifically? Do you know that, first of all? Well, I don't know what you're saying different time. I mean, uh, uh, nobody keeps track of time on Earth using an atomic clock. We use our own, well, we use our own uh, 24-hour clock or the 12-hour clock. No, 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 the most accurate clocks on Earth are uh, atomic powered. Uh, They're They're not crystal. That's no longer true. It's no longer um, atomic. They found something more accurate than the atomic clock. What, you? They just call you up every couple (laughs) hours and ask you what time it is? No, there's a there's something that's I, I forgot. I just read about it, but there's something that's even more accurate than the atomic clock because they found that the atomic clock once er, there's they they calculated something like a leap uh, century or something like that or a leap like four hundred years. Second. No, it was it's more than a leap second. Like every four hundred years, a leap two seconds. No, atomic clocks are pretty accurate. A leap three seconds. <laughs> I'm going to leap across this table in just a second, Dick. <laughs> okay, what's the clock that they found? But anyway, yeah, for all intents and purposes, an atomic clock is very accurate. So go on. So time, time goes faster the farther away you get from gravity. Do you know that? What? Time. If you're, if you're in space and you've got a big old binoculars out yeah. and you're looking at a naked chick, right? Uh-huh. Big cans. Yeah. And she happens to be wearing a watch. Yeah. And you look at that watch because maybe you're gay. I don't know. Okay. You don't want to see the naked chick. Sure. That watch she's wearing will be ticking slower than the watch that you have on your wrist because it's closer to a gravity well. Uh, okay. Yeah. So that means the cl- if you're on a GPS satellite out in space, you're so far away from gravity that the clock on the, G- on the GPS satellite is set to go slower yeah. To compensate for the, the distance away from the Earth it is. I think it's speed. I think speed has something to do with it, Dick. That's another thing. So another aspect of these satellites, because they're going so fast because they're in geosynchronous orbit. Yeah. They're going so fast compared to us that time for them goes faster. So when you subtract both, so when you compensate for both of those, um, they go faster than clocks on Earth's surface by 38 microseconds every day. Okay. If it wasn't for that 38 microseconds, the whole system would be fucked. Uh, what do you mean fucked? Well, because the GPS satellite sends its time code out at all times. Right. Like, they're, setting, they're, they're sending out what time it is to them yeah. at all times. And your little GPS device grabs the time from three of those satellites, and based on the differences in the time, it calculates where you are. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. So if the time on those satellites was not sped up yeah. to compensate for relativistic effects— yeah. It wouldn't, it wouldn't work. Huh. The whole system would be broken. Like, if they'd just taken a clock and sent yeah. it up into space, it'd be like, well, we have no fucking idea where we are, because uh-huh. these clocks say they're, like, two weeks in the future, and or two Ro- weeks in the past. And, and, Ronald Reagan and Ronald Reagan figured that out. And Ronald Reagan, and not some scientist, figured that out, right? Who, who paid the scientist? A politician Ronald Reagan. Did. Sure. Yeah, Ronald Reagan himself, and he wrote a check. He wrote a check. He, he emptied his pocketbooks and says, guys, I feel very strongly about science. Ronald Reagan... Yeah, they're a huge accomplishment. Yeah, great. GPS, great. Relativistic effects. Mm-hmm. One of the, I don't know what else we've invented that has to obey relativistic effects. Well, lots of things. Rocket ships. No, they don't. Sure, they do. What we have they? to. We the clocks on rocket ships are also uh, also account for relativistic effects. Yeah, but this is a uh, this is something we use every day. We're not using rocket ships every day. Well, without uh, the rocket ships, you wouldn't be able to use GPS. Would no, you? Dick? All right, that's yeah. my solution. Go ahead. What's yours? Good solution, Dick. 
But uh, I think I have a solution that's bigger. I think I have a, an actual solution that okay. is literally bigger than yours mm-hmm. and makes yours impossible without it. Satellites! <laughs> yeah. The noun satellites? <laughs> satellites. Yeah. Satellites make GPS possible. Well, bigger solution. Do you mean satellites like a, a thing that rotates around a, a celestial body? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, satellites. Like the ones that make GPS possible. Yeah. Do you mean man-made satellites? Well, I, I'm talking specifically about man-made satellites, but oh. uh, like or nat- nature, natural satellites like moons could be a solution, too. Actually, they are, because without it, our tidal forces would be out of whack. Okay. Right? It's a very delicate balance. <laughs> what a bullshit problem. You're a bullshit solution. problem. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, well, without satellites, dickhead, we wouldn't have GPS. Satellites are a significantly bigger solution than GPS because they are the inspiration for and the technology behind GPS. Yeah. But satellites are more useful than just GPS, dickhead, because we use them for communication. Every stupid text message you send or phone call you make with your cell phone uses satellites, which, by the way, is the reason we should no longer have a distinction between long distance and local calls, because it's all satellite communication anyway. It, it doesn't cost any, any extra to send a signal to, uh, say, France or Ohio. It doesn't fucking matter. It's all the same, like watching TV or, li- like, do you, do you like to watch TV or listen to the radio? No. Huh, well, doesn't matter, because <laughs> e- e- regardless, the people who do use satellites, dickhead, and you're just yeah. being a dick. Many people get dish service, and guess what they use? Satellites. Uh-huh. Even cable companies use satellites. Ever drive by a cable company and see that giant array of satellites out front? Uh-huh. Yeah. That's how you get your signal. That's how you get your TV stations. Oceanography. That's another thing that, that uh, benefits from satellites. Because of GPS? No, not, specific, not, not just because of GPS. Okay. Yeah. Phones and, G- and stuff? Satellite phones? No, Dick, it's a way of exploring the ocean. The Earth is covered roughly by 71% by oceans, over 361 million kilometers of area to explore. Before satellites, we used ships, buoys, and tide gauges to explore the ocean. Mm -hmm. That's a real shitty way to explore anything. Buoys, barf. Since satellites, (laughs) we found lost treasure, meteor, meteor impact sites, new species of animals, current direction, optimized navigation routes, etc. You said, Dick... In the first solutions episode, you said that the biggest pollution, the biggest source of pollution in the world are those cargo ships, yeah, right? Yeah, they are. Fif- the 15 biggest ships create more pollution than all the cars in the world. Uh-huh. And guess what helps cut down on that pollution? Optimized shipping routes due to oceanographers using satellites to figure that out. Yeah. Yeah. In addition to figuring out, figuring out things like, oh, I don't know, rising sea levels, the path of tropical storms and hurricanes. It's pretty useful. <laughs> Very useful. Oh, and speaking of tropical storms and hurricanes, meteorology, another thing that benefits from satellites. Satellites aid meteorologists in making weather forecasts. They're often wrong, right? Uh-huh. But, but at least we have an early warning system in place for tornado activity, which is usually pretty accurate. Yeah. I remember a couple of years back in Salt Lake City. Uh, Salt Lake is known for being a really safe place from tornadoes because the entire city is surrounded by mountains. So when you land in Salt Lake City, you're, there's just like mountains everywhere. And that protects you from tornadoes. It's really rare if a tornado ever touches down. And I, I remember a couple of years back, we got a weather service warning saying that there was going to be a tornado in Salt Lake City. Nobody believed in, myself included. I, that's when I, I was uh, downtown Salt Lake. Were you wearing a jacket at that time? No. Okay. No jacket. No jacket. So sure enough, a tornado touched down and hit our basketball stadium, the Delta Center. Oh. It was called the Delta Center at the time. And my, my parents were freaking out. They were, call, they were calling over and over again. And I didn't answer my phone because I was watching the news, you know. Finally, I answered the phone like this. Help me! Help me! Oh, my God! Ah, help me. <laughs> and then just hung up. And my mom freaked out. She called me back a few minutes later. Uh, she asked me why I did that. Anyway. Satellites. Satellites. Man-made satellites. Yeah. Or any satellites. Like the ones that killed the dinosaurs. Does that count, too? Any satellites? That wasn't... A satellite didn't kill the dinosaurs, Dick. I mean, it's a rotating object. That's not a satellite. It's not man-made, but no. it's a satellite. That's not a satellite. If it has an orbit, it's a satellite. It's not a satellite. It needs, it needs if it has an orbit. an orbit, it's a satellite. It, it, ha- it has to have an orbit around something. What was that uh, meteor's orbit? Let me ask you something. You don't know. So when I said GPS, yeah. and you said you're doing satellites, and yeah. I said I'll change my solution then so we can talk about something different, yeah. and you said no, you had something special planned, uh, the something special was just making sure I don't win. 
right? Dick, nobody it wins just, on the show. But it was clearly just so you would bring in a solution that was a superset of mine. You know what? Fuck you. I, I'm changing it to Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan is now my solution. Did you know that Reagan inherited a misery index, the sum of oh the inflation and unemployment rates of 19.9%? Yeah. And when he left, left office, it was at 9.7%? Wow. Ronald Reagan lowered the misery index of the U.S. by 10%. Something that, Take note, that is, Obama. Something that is closely tracked, right? 16 million new jobs were created under Ronald Reagan. Huh. Pretty good. Where is he when we need him? <laughs> Where is he now? Alzheimer's and in the grave, essentially. Yeah. Reaganomics, Ronald Reagan. have you heard of that? Yeah. Fucked poor people uh -huh. and made life way better for rich people. Yeah. Yeah. You can see a sharp increase in CEO salaries right around the time Reagan was in office and a sharp decline of the average person's income. And it's, it's still never rebounded, by the way. It never will. No. Thanks, Reagan. Yeah. Good solution. You are so petty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, since oh, the person satellites. who brings in, since the person who brings in monkeys just for a fucking vote crap to confuse our listeners. When I say go vote up monkeys, they get confused and they vote up the solution. Monkeys is a solution. Monkeys are a problem, buddy. And you brought that in just to fuck with me. So here we go, satellites. A superset of the problem. Look, Dick, I think GPS is a solution, just like oceanography is a well, solution. Yeah, you clearly Meteorology do. is a solution. All these things are solutions, right? But GPS is a lesser solution than satellites. <laughs> yeah, which I said, which is why I said I'll bring in something different so we can talk about something different. We You're are. Like, oh, no, 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 no. Don't, bring it in. Bring it in. It'll you, be. Did you talk about oceanography? <laughs> no. No. Oh, you, you didn't even talk about how. You shady fuck. <laughs> You didn't even talk about how GPS was invented. You just said Ronald, Ronald Reagan. Reagan. No, you fucking idiot. It wasn't Ronald Reagan. He decided to invent it after that plane crash. He well, opened it up for everybody. The 007 plane crash? Yeah. Yeah. That's a real thing. Uh-huh. Oh, thank you, Ronald Reagan. Well, did Ronald Reagan in, uh, discover astronomy? No. I don't know. And he doesn't I didn't read the whole Wikipedia page. <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't. He didn't benefit astronomy as much as satellites did. <laughs> Satellites have allowed us to discover distant galaxies, solar systems, and even planets. Dick. You know what? Who cares? What do we? What do? Who cares? How many you other stars and fucking... planets are? They're just full of more petty assholes like you who yeah. fuck their friends over before podcasts. <laughs> That's what the Hubble tell. Make the Hubble telescope see all the way to the edge of the universe. You know what you're gonna see? A bunch of assholes who drive like shit and think they drive awesome, yeah. and a bunch of assholes who fuck their friends over. Yeah. That's what the universe is full of. We need to spend billions of dollars to figure that out. Hey, look. We found another Earth planet. Guess what's on it? A bunch of people jerking off and wasting money looking right back at us. Who fucking cares? There is two reasons Dick is upset here. The first is, <laughs> the first is he still, still doesn't understand the podcast. He still doesn't understand that this podcast is not a competition. There is no such thing as winning between two disparate topics, Dick. <laughs> You know what wins between the flavor of apples and the flavor of oranges? What wins between GPS satellites and satellites? Ne neither satellites one. Satellites win. No, neither one. Satellites is a bigger solution. We oh, can say that. Such a fuck. Big <laughs> satellites is a bigger solution because GPS is a subset of satellites, right? I so know. I brought in. I brought in lesser minds and anti-intellectualism, right? Which uh -huh. are related, but one is a subset of the other, isn't it? Yeah. Well, they're both the same note in your symphony. Okay. In I your one note symphony. Go ahead, Sean. I hope these both end up in the negative. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Sean. I'm going to bring in Sean as a solution. I want you guys to vote it down. <laughs> Take that, Sean. What, Dick, we're on the verge of having satellites with enough precision to determine the atmospheric content of planets and other galaxies. Dick, do you know where helium was first discovered? Up your ass. Huh. No. Incorrect. <laughs> Not up my ass, Dick. On the sun. Yeah. They discovered hel helium in the sun. Not up my ass. How? Well, you tongue with a stupid my fart satellite? Box. Actually, that was done with um, just looking at the solar spectrum. Uh, they were looking at the light spectrum coming from the sun, and they found that there were certain bands uh, because there's an absorption spe spectrum for, for different elements, right? Uh -huh. Different elements absorb different wavelengths of light. And if you look at that light coming from the sun, you'll see a band, like a little narrow band, where helium is being absorbed. Yeah. So they know the absorption spectrum of hydrogen, because we have hydrogen on Earth. And this is before we discovered helium, right? Uh -huh. We know the absorption spectrum of oxygen and all these other different elements. So then when we, dis we saw this absorption spectrum of helium, we didn't know what it was. And we looked at the atomic elements and we, saw, oh, we, we thought that, okay, hydrogen is over here, 
Oxygen is over here, so something in between the two. There was just a blank? Well, we didn't we didn't, hadn't discovered all the elements at that time. I would when was this? 1800s. But they didn't have satellites in the 1800s, so how did satellites figure this out? No, but but using satellites, we can tell the the uh, atmospheric content of distant planets. Like we're we're working on satellites right now with precision to be able to determine the atmospheric contents of distant planets yeah. using the same technology, looking at the absorption spectrum. And if they have too much smoke in their atmosphere, we'll dispatch a committee to go make it illegal <laughs> over there. You know what Ronald You're Reagan so discovered? You're so salty that it's morning in America. <laughs> That's what Ronald Reagan discovered. Oh, uh, he di- <laughs> <laughs> you fucking politician, shill. We, Dick, we've measured cosmic background radiation and the average temperature of the universe using satellites and learned a lot about our own planet and solar system. We found visual proof of black holes in 2012. Did you know that? How's Who that cares? for a discovery? Did Ronald Reagan discover that? No. He's discovered something more important. He discovered a reason for America to get to work and pull <laughs> itself up by its bootstraps. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> uh, you know what else we use satellites for, Dick? Navigation. Uh, as you mentioned, GPS. Can we spot the edges of your <laughs> ego with a satellite? Do we have satellites that powerful? <laughs> uh, maybe, Dick, but if you get lost in my ego, you know what you'll need? Search and rescue satellite operations. We have satellites that can help rescue teams and find stranded boats, planes, and hikers. You know what I have? I have the ghost of Ronald Reagan that I can pray to if I get lost. <laughs> I don't need satellites. Don't look for me. Good. I won't. I won't. Oh, man, what a refreshing thought, you being lost. Then (laughs) there are personal locator beacons, Dick, and satellite messengers. These things are so powerful. If you get lost at sea, you can press this button on this thing, and a plane will show up and rescue you. Yeah. Fucking amazing, satellites. And then finally, Dick, you said that Ronald Reagan is responsible for ending the Cold War, Dick. Yeah, he is. Wrong. Reconnaissance and surveillance satellites helped end that war because mm-hmm. they let us peer into dangerous countries and see where there's militarized activity. Say, like when Cubans are stockpiling missiles from Russia. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's how we knew about that. Who's authorizing? Who controls the satellites? These satellites are mere toys in the hands of Ronald Reagan, a powerful man who works <laughs> them like works them like a puppet master, seeing oh. into the evil Soviet. Soviet Empire. Yeah. Protecting us. Yeah. Protecting us. Yes, oh, protecting please. us. The, the libertarian is 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 lionizing Ronald Reagan for protecting us. Oh, please, government, protect me. He was a great man and a beautiful man, and he deserves <laughs> to be voted up above Malila Yousafzai or whatever her name was. Malali, uh, Malali Yousafzai, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, he doesn't, Dick. The, the, the Cold War ended, by the way, because we also had missiles in Italy and Turkey that was pissing off Russia. And that's the whole reason Russia came to Cuba and said, well, let's put a, let's, let's put a porcupine yeah. down America's pants. I think the Cold War ended because uh, Russia was poor as shit. Well, that has and something to do with eat. it. Anyway, Dick, satellites. Oh, you're such a fuck. Go. It's that's, your turn that's to my move solution. on the game. Oh, okay. You've What's moved that? on the game of life by stabbing me in the back. <laughs> You're such a pussy. You still don't understand the show. Okay. <laughs> Spick, uh, Dick, uh, speaking of uh, being stabbed in the back, black income disparity decreases as urban areas recover from recession. Move up three spaces. Cool. Cool. I heard Spick. <laughs> what? Yeah. What? He said in that Spick. card? Dick. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> that was an accident. I'm reading from a card now. Your rich aunt has the travel bug and offers to take you to Europe with you. Uh, no mention of how big her cans are, though. Dick, it's your Mo- aunt. That's okay. Gross. You can have an aunt with big... It's not your mom. It's your aunt. All right. What you if can it's have not- a hot aunt. It could be through marriage. Yeah, Maddox. It could be your mom's brother's wife. All right, Dick, go bang your aunt. I don't mind if I do. After I move up four <laughs> spaces. <laughs> All right. Here, Sean, you read one. All right. Does it say anything about Maddox screwing you over on your card? (laughs) Oh, shit, I'm going back one space. An MPAA-style rating system comes to YouTube, and your channel gets hit with an MA rating. Mm. I would would never have a YouTube channel. It's true. But I'm still moving back one space. Yeah, you're back. All right. Colin, unfortunately, you don't get to go because you got killed. Colin got killed the first. First, on the first space in the game. Guys, right, am I turning Yeah, now? What's, your, what's your solution? My next Dick? solution is a superhero stance. Oh, yeah? Yeah, how about this? I so, think I know this, yeah. If you stand like an idiot, like if you stand with your hands on your hips posing like a superhero, yeah. they've determined that this, like, this increases your not only your self confidence, but also your testosterone levels. Right. So if you're going to do something that you need courage to do, 
go to the bathroom and stand like Superman for yeah. like five seconds. Two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes is the, they found the effect is the strongest when you do it for two minutes. I are, I'm already almost full on testosterone, though. I only need a couple seconds. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, Dick. I brought in the whole, I brought in the whole, uh, the whole study. It's pretty funny. Uh, let's see. The superhero stance projects power. It's an example of what psychologists refer to as an open posture in which limbs are spread out in a way to take up more space, such as legs being apart. So it's, it's basically saying that man-spreading makes you a more powerful person. Right. Yeah. It increases your testosterone and builds your confidence. There's a TED Talk about this, Dick. Well, I'll let you oh, go on. Oh, kill me. Yeah. There's a, there was already a TED Talk about this? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, it's it's not a it's not a new phenomenon. But yeah, did you or did you bring in the TED Talk to talk about it? No, I hate TED Talks. Okay, well there was a girl. I'd on rather there. eat a bunch of glass than listen to a TED Talk. Yeah, that's true. I'd like to see that. Yeah, I'd, I'd be, Sean, if you had a YouTube channel, you could put stuff like that on there. Like my opinion of people drops whatever it was at first, it drops down into like the single percentage points if I hear they've done a TED Talk. You could yeah. uh, Titanic him right back by showing him TED Talks. Oh, oh fuck oh, you, Sean. Oh, fuck you. Yeah. Woo. Yeah, there we go. High That's power. smart. That's what's coming in, Dick. You're getting right, let's, TED Talks. Let's, let's change the subject really fast here. Yeah. Uh, high power poses. High power poses were sitting in a chair, arms behind your head, elbows out, and feet up on a desk like a boss relaxing. And standing in front of the table with your feet apart, blah, 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 blah. So they gave these people, they made these people stand in uh, stupid positions. In one, in one hand, on one side of the experiment, you had power poses. Yeah. Where people had their feet kicked up, their arms crossed behind their backs. They're probably thinking about their yacht or something, mm-hmm. acting like a big shot. Yeah. And then the other people, they had to take up as little, little space as possible. Like looking very demure, yeah. Putting, yeah. Their, putting their arms against right. their body, stuff right. like that. And then they gave them a, uh, a gambling task where they said the odds were 50-50, all right? Right. And they were each given two bucks, and they had the option to keep the money or to risk it and double, risk it on a die roll and double their money. Okay. Where they would double it or lose it all together. Yeah. Right? So what did they find? That the people who they made pose in that open posture superhero pose mm-hmm. were more likely to risk the money. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Pretty cool. More, it makes them a little bit more confident, a little bit more aggressive, huh? They tested their saliva, and they found that um, the hormone associated with stress... Cortisol, right? Yeah, is cortisol. That, yeah, it's cortisol. Uh-huh. That's why you need sleep, too. Uh, yeah, the testosterone well. levels would drop when... Hold on. Good notes. I just printed out the article. I know. I know. I know how you, <laughs> you bring in your notes. He brings in eight uh, pages, nine pages yeah, of notes. Well, while we're here setting up, you're typing up your shit. Yeah. So oh, this is the best yeah. I could do. It's way better to wait live during the show than before the show and get all your ducks in a row so the show goes smoothly. All right, look. <laughs> they had less stress. You know, what, they had less, what, 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 well, what I could read find? the whole yeah. thing, but it's boring. No, I'm curious. I think it's interesting. What, what does it say? Oh, yeah. People who are powerful tend to have uh, lower baseline levels of cortisol. And when they're stressed, their cortisol levels uh, didn't rise as much as people who were in the prone positions. Yeah, that's correct. So if you're feeling stressed out, get yourself in a power pose. Yeah. Dick, see, why are you shitting on your own solution? What do it's you mean? like you don't even believe this. You don't even believe the words you're saying. You're saying, oh, look at this goofy pose. Look at this stupid pose. Look at these idiots. I hate well, it TED is Talks. stupid. What's stupid about it? Looking like a superhero? That's embarrassing. It's not like posing like you're Superman. Dick, no joke. I I stand like that a lot. I put my hands on my hips often. Yeah. Uh. And even when I work, my legs are kicked up at my desk. You've seen my desk. I don't even have a desk actually. It's just a chair, and I have a footrest. Yeah. And my my legs are always kicked out, and I'm always leaning back, and I'm always putting my hands on my hips. It it works. This is something, I don't know if I if I I don't know which came first, the chicken or the egg here. Whether or not I was just a uh, uh, really full of testosterone and confident and powerful before. It's a good question. Yeah. But no, it does work, Dick. Um, so they talked about that in that TED Talk. A woman yeah. said that she was really not confident and uh, demure and wanted to do some public speaking. She was always nervous about it. So she experimented with this, and it gave her so much more confidence after the fact. Uh, I, I believe there's something to it. You know, Dick, there's another study. I saw it's it, it, this wasn't a study so much as a documentary, I think, on National Geographic. They were observing apes, male apes, um, the silverback, silverback gorillas, rather. Yeah. The big ones. Yeah, they're were, they were observing gorillas, 
And they were trying to determine which ones were the alpha gorillas. Because in every gorilla pack, there's always at least one alpha gorilla uh-huh. who is defined by the most aggressive gorilla, the gorilla who gets laid the most, the, the gorilla who passes on his genes, and so on and so forth, right? Yeah. That's the alpha gorilla. And they watched the posture of the gorillas, and they tried to determine which one was the alpha gorilla just based on a photograph. And they could always tell. Every single time, it's because the alpha gorilla stood a different way. So then they thought, well, let's see if we can use the same test on humans. So they did a, they did an experiment where they brought a bunch of guys into, I think, a mechanic shop or a, a waiting room or something, mm-hmm. like nine different guys, and then they brought in a woman. And then they looked at every uh, each each guy's posture and his pose and tried to determine which one would be most aggressive with trying to flirt with a woman or pick her up. They <laughs> nailed it every single time. The guys who were who were the most ape like, yeah. the most gorilla like, the ones who puffed up their chest and put their arms to the sides uh-huh. and they had that male that, that really strong alpha pose. Yeah. Those were the guys who went up right to the woman and started talking to them. But the other guys who were kind of shrunken in and trying to take up less space, feeling like they didn't belong, showed a lack of confidence. And they're the ones who didn't say anything. They were very. They got a little bit shy around the other guys. Yeah, that's interesting because this is at, on the surface. This gambling test kind of seems pointless. Like it's a fifty-fifty gambling odds is um, dumb. Like saying that saying that the power pose increased their odds of gambling on a coin toss is not really a compliment, right? Would you say? It's not necessarily. It's not necessarily. However, it kind of makes it a wash. But when you're talking about approaching a woman, which is most of the question, almost all of the questions I get, nobody wants to know my opinion on anything else but how to talk to women. Yeah, <laughs> you're the right guy to go to. Yeah, I am. Yeah. And part of that is approaching Talking to a woman like a 50-50 gamble. No. Well, Dick, if you— Did you you say no or yeah? Well, no, I disagree with— I I mean, that's your philosophy, and you're allowed to have that, and I I think it's it's broken. But She's either going to like you or she's not. (laughs) Okay, Dick. That's it. I guess. You can't make her like you. You can come across as more affable and charismatic. You can be be more appealing to people based on what you do. Say, for example, I don't know, you're a politician like, oh, I don't know, Ronald Reagan. Ronald fucking Reagan was charismatic as fuck. Everybody liked him. He was a very popular president. I even liked his personality. Like, he was a likable president because he had this warmth and charisma about him, Mm -hmm. right? And he was a great orator. But. That doesn't necessarily you can, so uh, that that goes to say that you can improve your likability with people. That's why I think it's a broken philosophy. Yours, um, real shitty advice. But Dick, what I want to specifically mention: How are mention, you going to improve whether a chick wants to fuck you or not? I'm not they saying they either do I, or don't. I'm okay. Well, Dick, sometimes chicks don't want to fuck you, and then they change their minds later. What happened oh, between, between that's A and B? A slippery slope. No, it's not. That's too much work. Okay. You got to convince them to like you. Go ahead, guys. Ask Dick for advice. Listen to this though, Dick. You brought in. As a solution, the stupidly phrased ask for a raise, right? Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay. It's asking a good for solution. A you know what, Dick? That study that you just mentioned, the gambling one, mm-hmm. where you have a 50% chance of winning, and you said that people who have more testosterone and people who feel more confident are, are more likely to take that risk, right? right. To, to bet, right? That's exactly what you want when it comes to asking for a raise. Asking for a raise... That could be viewed as also a 50% uh, probability, even though there may be other, other factors that play into it. But from your perspective, either you're going to get it or you're not, right? Same with chicks. Oh, okay. That's exactly the same. What do you spend time, like, sweet-talking them into a, into a used car? Dick, there are things that factor into picking up women. Like, for example, your hygiene and how you look and how you act. Like, if you show up to a party and you act like a big, boisterous dumbass— Some and you, chicks are going to love that. Well, some chicks maybe, but in general, No. Oh, that's total horse shit. Yeah. Chicks love loud guys. Okay. Well, and loud jackasses. And, 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 Don't change who you are. And you're Be nailed, yourself yeah. and then just say, hey, what's up? Do you want a bone or what? Great. They either do or they don't. Yeah. That's how they work. Dick, you Same have, as guys. You, you have been slapped by more women than any other guy I know in life. Yeah, and each one was a learning experience. For, for, for them, them or not you? me. Okay. For them. <laughs> yeah, they learned what your face felt like <laughs> when they slapped it. Anyway, Dick. Um, That's a reaction. I'll take that reaction. Dick, your solution asking for a raise could not be a solution without the confidence it takes. If more people had confidence, say, for example, if more people took that power pose mm-hmm. and had more testosterone and had more confidence and asked for a raise, yeah. that would be a solution to, that's the solution that you're suggesting, asking for a raise. You could do both. Great. You could do one without the other. All right, Dick. Big jumbled mess of contradictions and confusion. How is any of that 
contradictory. You think that the... You, why am I defending your fucking solution? I don't care. Go ahead, shit in your solution. I think it's a great solution, do but you? it's a stupid, embarrassing pose that it's you not. should do anyway. No, I do it all the time. Have you ever noticed me doing it? Uh, looking like Superman? I like putting my arms out to the side. Oh yeah, I've noticed that. Yeah, I do that a lot. Old fat. It looks a little old fashioned. Yeah, yeah. It's cool. Yeah. Old fashioned, like a 1920s boxer. Cool. Yeah, yeah. I like it. Anyway, Dick. Um, that's uh, that's all I got. Or you that, want to move your piece? Like, yeah. We're getting a little behind on the game board. Next card I got says, on a road trip, your hot Asian passenger feeds you as you drive. Move oh, up three spaces. Cool. That's a good one. Uh, that's the shitty passengers episode. I remember yeah. that. Uh, here's mine. You see Jennifer Lawrence's tits. Awesome. She's hot. Move up four spaces. I think it's a sex crime, though. One, two, three, four. Sean, you want me to read yours? Yeah, go for it. All right. Your life coach gives you some great advice about investing. Move up two spaces. One, two. My there life coach recently got a urinating in public ticket. Did I tell you about that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah. You should bring that in uh, for the next episode. I, I don't want to air his personal okay. business That's on fair. there. Dick, um, we should get to the final solution here. We're running out of time. <laughs> All right. <laughs> What, you wanted to talk about it or no? The final solution? I know. He I know. Oh, no. Okay. He just I said see. spick and final solution <laughs> in the shut, same episode. Shut your pie hole. That's not, what I, that's not what I said. That was an accident. I misspoke. Yeah. I always say it with more venom when I say it. <laughs> Guys, let's get to the real biggest solution in the world, in the universe, rather. Temperance. Oh, fuck off. Temperance? Temperance. Yeah. Of liquor? Of everything, Dick. Do you and even know everything? what temperance is? Do you know what temperance is? Have you ever heard of that word? Go ahead. You're just, you're just saying go ahead because you don't. You don't know what that is. I don't know what temperance is. Well, you, no. That's when you chop your dick off, right? Uh-huh. Okay. There it is. There, there is the exact opposite of temperance. Temperance is the quality of avoiding excesses. That's it. In essence, it's moderation. And moderation is a virtue. You know what? Fuck your yeah. moderation. <laughs> Fuck you right up your ass. <laughs> Biggest, uh, best page in the universe telling us about moderation. Fuck you. Hey, Dick, as we have already established, I am an exception to many rules on this show. Go ahead. Too much alcohol. Too much alcohol and you're an alcoholic, right? No. Yeah. Why do you mean no? No, it's not about having too much alcohol that makes you an alcoholic. Okay, it's, it's about, about losing it. control. Oh, it's, it's about, about needing me. it every day of your uh, life. Well, that's you for sure. Because life is miserable. Yeah. Too many drugs and you're an addict, right? You do too many drugs, you're an addict. Dick, any, there, there's so many excesses that you can do too much of that ruin your life, right? Even sex, sexual desire. It leads to cheating and infidelity if you, if you can't get your, your dick under control. Uh-huh. Yeah. Vanity. Too much vanity leads to narcissism, self-absorption, and selfie sticks. Go what up selfie sticks, people. Right? Anger. Sometimes it ends in a bestseller, though. What, vanity? A best-selling book. Yeah. Wow. I wouldn't say that that's what spawned my first book. It wasn't vanity. Okay. That was my, that was philanthropy. <laughs> <laughs> anger. Too much anger leads to violence and death, right? Too much eating leads to obesity. Too much not eating, so not eating enough, leads to anorexia. Even too much exercise can lead to anorexia. Did you know that? That's a type of anorexia. If, when you exercise too much, it's called uh, exercise anorexia. Hmm. Yeah. That needs to catch on. <laughs> <laughs> too bad that's not contagious. Oh, boy. Too much sitting leads to numerous health problems. Uh -huh. Lack of exercise, so doing no exercise leads to health problems. Too much talking gives you an immodest air and gives others headaches. Yeah, I'm getting one right now. <laughs> yeah, I was waiting this for it. sanctimonious solution. That was such a low-hanging fruit. <laughs> I knew you'd take it. I knew you'd bite that apple. Too much listening to loud music leads to hearing loss. Looking at, looking at lights that are too bright leads to vision loss, right? Too much reading and education. Now, you would think that too much reading and education, there's no such thing, right? But it can lead to having too high opinion of oneself, uh -huh. pedantry, and the Dunning-Kruger effect. So what are you nodding at, Sean? Sean's looking at me and nodding. Because you are the smuggest yeah, fuck okay. in the universe, no, no, no. and you're lecturing us about temperance. <laughs> you dare to lecture anyone about temperance? <laughs> I you was know agreeing. fucking oh, nothing Sean's about agreeing. temperance. I invented temperance, my friends. Do you do a moderate <laughs> amount of drugs? No, you do none. That's the opposite amount of moderation. Because drugs are risky, dick. You know what part of temperance is? It's self-regulation, modesty, and humility. 
right? <laughs> and prudence. Prudence is an element of temperance. So pr- it's not prudent to try drugs, is it? Because you know the risks, and the risks far outweigh the rewards. So no. there is no moderation. Uh, uh, oh, uh, Maddox, you call yourself a moderate? How come you don't cut one of your fingers off? You got ten of them. Why don't you at least cut one off? Dumbass argument. That's because it's imprudent, Dick. The risks of drugs do not outweigh the rewards. The risks are addiction and a life of defeat and destruction and destroyed family members. Yeah, if you're a pussy, if <laughs> okay. you can handle your drugs, it's <laughs> awesome. Just do them and get high. Cool. And look cool. Yeah. Live advice from Dick Masterson. Tain- yeah, instead of Emily Post over here. Oh. <laughs> uh, Dick, um, this concept of temperance. Uh, transcends every major religion and philosophy in life. In, yeah. hin- in Hinduism, the concept is called Dhamma. It's roughly equivalent to temperance. In Greek culture, it translates to moderation in action, thought, or feeling. Or in one word, just restraint. It's one of Plato's four core virtues. Aristotle called it a mean with regards to pleasure. So it's averaging all your pleasures, right? And I'll tell you why doing drugs and all this other bullshit is imprudent in just a minute, Dick. I, I'm getting to that. But Christianity considers temperance a virtue as well. Yeah, because it's how they control people. That's how all religions control people. Oh, sure. By making them give up vices. Yeah. And giving them an, of an, an inflated sense of self-worth because they're able to withhold things. Well, what about uh, Native American spiritualism? Same thing. No, they Just do another drugs. Religion. Drugs are a part of their, their religion, Dick. Oh, their opium yeah. shit? Getting opium. high? Uh-huh. Cool. What do you want me to do? Okay. What about it? Well, you said that that's how religions, t- they, you said that temperance is the way religions control people, but some religions specifically have an element of drugs. Yeah, I'm talking about the big, the big bad three, though. The, the, what, are the, know, what are the big bad three? Christianity, Islam, and Mormonism. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the big bad three. The, common, the commonly known three. In more contemporary Those times. Are the ones that are expanding. That's what you got to watch out for in a religion is the way it expands. Uh, Native Americans aren't expanding their uh, teepee smokeouts. Yeah. Dick, I'm done taking advice. Um, Ben Franklin and the Boy Scouts of America consider temperance a virtue. The Boy Scouts. Would you say that's an evil organization, Dick? Yeah. I think Ronald Reagan Scouts? was a Boy Scout. He was, on, he was in favor of Boy Scouts. Really? Was he in favor of their ban on gays, too? Probably. He's conservative. Oh, fuck you. Yeah. Conser- all conservatives are against gay rights? No, no, they are not. But you're more likely to be against gay rights if you're conservative. Just looking at statistics. Statistically speaking, you're more likely to be against gay rights if you're a conservative. You're more likely to drive a Prius if you're liberal, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Hmm. But it's, not, it's just a general rule of thumb if you look at statistics. Is that what we're doing now? Well. Who's more likely to commit female genital mutilation? What group? Statistically. Statistically, no one, because it's less than 99% of the population. Oh, okay. So yeah. there's no statistics for that number. Statistically, it's zero. Statistically. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, from a psychological standpoint, Dick, temperance can be reduced to the following four traits. The first one is forgiveness or mercy, right? The second one is modesty and humility. The third one is prudence. That's what you've never heard of. And then the fourth one is self-regulation. That's the other thing you've never heard of. You've never heard of any of this shit, Dick. Should we be doing signs of the cross while you're giving this fucking <laughs> sermon? What the fuck? Where do you get off telling people about temperance? Fuck you. Life is hard. If smoke them if you got them. Do drugs. They're awesome. Yeah. Any other, temperance. Any other bumper stickers you want to recite, Dick? What the fuck is this temperance? Well, so what? You're going to die with, uh, uh what, a, a moderately regulated corpse? What is the point of temperance? You get nothing out of it. <laughs> what do you get for this? What do I get in you exchange get for this? a longer and happier life. Let me read this, Dick. Um, so forgiveness is the, is the, this is from this website. I think it says, uh, oh, here, oh, this is, this is from berkeley.edu. Okay, it says forgiveness is the conscious, deliberate decision to release feelings of resentment or vengeance towards a person or group who has harmed you, regardless of whether or not you think they deserve your forgiveness, right? So there's a study from Science Direct that says this, the name of the study is called Failure to Forgive Self and Others, a Replication and Extension of the Relationship Between Forgiveness, Personality, Social Desirability, and General Health. So they found a direct correlation between your health and likability and your personality and forgiveness. Failure, At Berkeley, so, what a surprise. They what? At Berkeley, what Berkeley, a surprise. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, were oh, healing crystals a part of this experiment at what, the scientists at Berkeley? With, what's wrong with Berkeley, Dick? Are they too liberal? Or, uh, would you say that that's a liberal school? I don't even know. I don't even think they could see liberal anymore. Yeah. Oh, so you're saying that they went so far beyond it. So you're saying their intemperance is a problem then? Their intemperance? Their lack. You, you're, you're saying that they're so liberal that they're extreme. So, so by definition, if they had temperance in their liberal views, they wouldn't be so liberal, would they? And they wouldn't be a problem. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Well, well, well. 324 students, undergraduate students, were tested. They completed measures of forgiveness of oneself, forgiveness, uh, forgiveness of others, and they found that failure to forgive oneself is accompanied by personality and general health scores that reflect individual psychopathology, with men and women scoring higher in neuroticism, depression, and anxiety for failing to forgive. A failure to forgive others is accompanied by personality and general health scores that reflect social introversion among men. And among women, it shows that social pathology, uh, social dysfunction, and psychoticism. Mm -hmm. So women who are less likely to forgive makes them a little bit more psychotic, and men who are less likely to for uh, forgive are, makes them more introverted. Further, a failure to forgive others is accompanied by higher depression scores among men and women. The findings suggest that the concept of forgiveness can be related to an individual and social psychopathology. How well, about that? Here's, there's the Jesus uh, comparison. Great. Great. Temperance and forgiveness. Thank you, Internet Jesus. Dick, I'm not for saying us. I'm a temperate person. I'm just saying that temperance is a solution. Yeah. You understand that I can talk about things I am not. I've, I'm bringing in Ronald Reagan. I'm yeah. not Ronald Reagan. Well, I wish I was. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Your desktop wallpaper is Ronald Reagan right now. It is. It's always been. Humility, Dick. The accurate, oh my God. the accurate and not underestimated sense of one's own abilities and achievement. That's important, Dick. That second phrase I said. Yeah, because it not, gets you off the hook. Not underestimated. Yeah, it gets me off the hook uh -huh. because I, I'm not underestimating my, my ability. The ability to acknowledge one's mistakes and gaps in knowledge. It's part of temperance. Openness to new ideas. Uh -huh. Empirical findings on humility are pretty sparse. So people look at the opposite. They look at people who are narcissistic, right? And people who are narcissistic tend to be more competitive, more dominant, more hostile, more angry, more aggressive. Yeah. And feel more entitled and have low self-esteem and fail to express gratitude and give or seek forgiveness less frequently. Good. Oh, great. Yeah. Great. Because all you temperate nerds are getting your milkshakes <laughs> drunk. That's why you don't like it. Fuck temperance. Fuck you. Yeah. Well, well, you don't subscribe to any of that. I know of course you don't. I do. Ass kicking and child beating are part of your my or your credo. That sculpts a child who's great. If you if a child gets no ass beatings, he's gonna grow up to be a fuck up. It's going to be a molester when he grows up. Guaranteed. Look it up. That's a fact. Prudence. Prudence is another element of temperance. Being careful about one's choices, not taking undue risks, and not saying or doing things that you might later regret. Be a pussy. All these can be summed up by <sighs> be a pussy. What a fucking asshole. No. Self don't take any risks. No, it's, it didn't say don't take any risks. Don't take unnecessary risks. Only buy stocks that go it up. It says don't take foolish risks, Dick. Uh, a 50-50% bet on a gamble, like in your solution that you brought in, your, your, uh, 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 your power pose solution, a 50% bet is not imprudent, right? The odds yeah. are just as likely in your favor as they are against. Uh -huh. An imprudent bet would be to take a bet where the odds are, are vastly against you. They're always against you. No, they're not. Yes, they are. That study literally it makes you, that you cited no, isn't that's against not you. A real life, that's not a real life situation. In, re, in life, in real life, the odds are always against you. That's Writing a book, yeah, it's absolutely true. Writing a book, odds are against you. You're probably going to fuck up. Starting a business, 80% of businesses fail. 90% of businesses fail. Every fucking single thing in life, the odds are against you. Marriage, it's over 50% end in divorce. So what do you do if you're temperate? Don't take and be risk averse. You're going to end up in a van down by a river. You're going to end up living with your parents your entire life because you didn't take any fucking risks. Take risks. Don't be temperate. Everything, everything in society is encouraging you to do nothing, to not rock the boat and to not follow rules, and you should do the opposite at all times. Wow, what a big old crybaby bitch. Don't be temperate. Dick, there's plenty of times in life where the risk that you take is proportional to the reward, or the reward is great is greater than the risk that you potentially take. Acid is not as bad as they make okay. it seem. Great. That's all I'm saying. Well, that leads me to the last point here in uh, temperance, Dick. Self-regulation is the capacity to override your natural desires 
tendencies or behaviors to pursue long-term goals at the expense of short-term happiness. Does that make sense, Dick? Determining the amount of food or alcohol you should consume, right? Self-regulation. Determining not to flirt with a neighbor's wife or friend's girlfriend or giving into carnal temptations even though you may want to in the moment. Because you know down the line that's going to that's gonna hurt you and it's going to hurt them. Yeah. People who have self-regulation have higher GPAs, report fewer pathological symptoms, they're less obsessive-compulsive, they are less depressed, they have less anxiety, less anger, less phobic anxiety, less paranoid ideation, and less psychoticism, as well as higher self-acceptance and higher self-esteem. The more cooperative and financially responsible you are, the more likely you are to self-regulate and less likely to abuse drugs or alcohol. Fuck you. There you go. No, no, do it. It's a great solution because doing all those things will make you that much easier to be to get taken advantage of by people who aren't doing that. Because the people who are taking advantage are so smart, right? No, they're not smart. They're just vicious. They just take other people's things. You can be vicious but temperate too. You don't have to be. You don't. Intemperance isn't necessarily being vicious, but you're more likely to be. Well, all right. That's your solution? Yeah. I disagree with it. Temperance. I think people get told that lesson way too much. I think people sit around trying to maximize their return on things so much that they end up doing nothing. Yeah. Dick, uh, I'm not saying here, – here's the thing. You, are, you can't even think in any capacity – in a temperate way, even when it comes to risk aversion, you your solution, your problem with this is that someone might take the extreme view of never taking a fucking risk, which is by definition intemperate. You fuck. Listen to what I'm saying. If people are temperate, then they will not be completely risk averse, will they? They will look at the risk and calculate it. And then look at the benefit and say, OK, well, let's have a simple cost versus benefit analysis. Does the benefit outweigh the risks? Then we should take this risk, shouldn't we? You're, you're, the way you think is entirely intemperate, Dick. Too late. I already did it. <laughs> you missed your chance to do it because someone like me did it. Uh, way to go back to your lab and cook up a how to live formula. Yeah. You want to go? When? Wait. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let me draw a card. When? When's the last time someone uh, someone taught you a lesson in, in temperance, Dick? You said, what the you hell said does that, that mean? This, because you What's said that supposed to mean? You, you want to fight him? <laughs> <laughs> you said this is a message that's constantly being crammed down your throat. Where? Where? Who's who's sending this message? Um, gosh, I, I think all of society is sending this message. I think academia is sending this message. Like the idea that you have to go to a four-year university before you can even try to have a career, to me, is is temperance. Like it's the it's an extreme version of what you're talking about. You think it's temperate to have to go to a four-year degree? I would say the opposite. I would say that that's more extreme in terms of education. You get the basic education you need up through high school and then specialized education zero. in college. No, yeah. it's not zero. Uh, coming out of high school? I think you know absolutely dick coming out of high okay, school. Well, that's right. I don't think reading No, I don't think reading uh the stranger and where the red fern grows teaches you anything about life. Well, that's cherry picking and also What else in high school do they teach? They teach you math, they teach you trigonometry, they math. teach you chemistry, they do, teach you biology. Do you think a kid who graduates from a, a normal kid who graduates from high school knows shit about math that they couldn't have like that they couldn't do on a calculator? No, because of too too many of these anti-intellectual fuckheads are sitting around. Uh, in fact, I, I just saw this tweet the other day, it pissed me off. Yeah. The tweet said, "Yep, another day went by and I still haven't used algebra." This fucking asshole. Well, really, how many times in your day do you use haikus? How many times in your day do you use specific grammar rules that are so obscure that you had to learn on some test? How yeah. many times per day do you use do you use biology or earthquakes or chemistry or social sciences? All these things that you learn in school make you a more well-rounded person and create neural pathways in your mind that help your mind think critically down the line. Yeah, we can't precisely say what it is, what combination of things you learn in school that help you do that. But, but school collectively has that aggregate function yeah it has that aggregate effect on you and makes you a better more well-rounded person that's why we have creationists because they're homeschooled they went to school too yeah home they got homeschooled their parents pull them out of school they don't want to teach them evolution they they think they had after hours education yeah about creationism you don't you you think the majority of creationists just uh, uh they're exposed to all the ideas and they just choose creationism because it makes more sense no because it's what their parents told them to do hmm 
do you think school is uh, people who go get a traditional education are more likely or less likely to be creationists? Who get a traditional? Well, um, so that includes what people who were schooled in like a religious school. Yeah, I would say they are much more likely to be creationists. Yeah, someone who went to like a religious right little uh, elementary school because yeah. when you're when you're getting a religious education that's intemperate, you are getting all your education from one source that has a theological motive yeah. in their curriculum, whereas public education does not. I don't really care about creationists, though. There's not that many of them, yeah. and they're stupid. Yeah, they are stupid, but there's enough of them to change the curriculum in Kansas. Well, but that's – see, that's a. I think that's a separate issue. I think we've got a problem in this country of paying attention to extreme minority groups. Like, we can't just say, go fuck yourself. When they, yeah. when they bring in – first of all – Part of it is that they're hijacking school boards. Like a group of four or five um, individuals should not be able to determine the uh, the textbooks for the entire country. And because so many people pay attention to those textbooks in the South, the the book people have to write them for them. They're not writing like a different textbook for every state. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because everybody buys them from the same place. They're like, well— this is going to be everybody's sex book because we have to change it for them. Well, it's not four or five people on a committee somewhere on a school board? in Kansas. Yeah, it is. No, but those people those people represent their con- uh, constituents. They represent some of their constituents, but it's still them making the decision. It's right. like the Supreme Court. It's, they didn't get, they're just there. They're making the call however they see it. But, Dick, the, the problem is once Kansas falls and then West Virginia falls and then maybe Virginia as a whole falls, these, these states, if they, if, they're, if they start falling in line with this broken, corrupt ideology of creationism, be it creationism or anti-vaccinations, yeah. right? It's a contagious idea. People start listening to other people and they start reading their materials and they're wrong. That's why it's a, I, I think it's so important. Well, we're getting off topic No, no, no but you're, you're wrong on one thing. It doesn't, take a dom- it doesn't take the dominoes to fall. It only takes one to fall. Because if one falls, all the textbooks have to get rewritten because everybody buys from the same place. Do you see the difference? Yeah, well, yeah, but the the, the fact that uh, the textbooks aren't – the textbooks, thankfully, are federally mandated. They're federally so regulated. you say thankfully. I say that's part of this problem. No, it's not a problem because the, uh, the federal curriculum is standard, and they're not going – it's much harder to change the federal curriculum than it is a state curriculum. A state curriculum can teach you any goofy nonsense and horse shit that you want, which uh-huh. is, again, I, this is a veiled attack on libertarianism, by the way, what which I know doing? you pick up on. Yeah. yeah, I know you're picking up on it. Anyway, Dick, uh, my card says you accidentally deleted a podcast, uh-huh. but you're able to recover it, saving the day. Don't do it again, Sean. Move up two spaces. All right. Uh, you twist your ankle on the way home from a bar, but a nurse fixes it with a cold laser. Move up two spaces and draw again. Oh, yeah. Man, he puts so much work into these. A deadly outbreak of measles strikes, but since you're not an anti-vaxxer, dipshit, you're safe. Move up two spaces. All right, Sean. No, you, you that was, wasn't that Sean? Did yeah, you that just was, read? He read two that cards. That was Sean's, yeah. No, just, I'm me. You're you. I'm me, and Sean is Sean. What about the cold laser thing? Wait, did you read for him? No. No, I read, I read for me. For, uh, mine said draw again, and then I drew again. Oh, oh, oh okay. okay. Have that you wasn't... guys ever played a board game before? No. With all your critical thinking fucking <laughs> temperance shit? I didn't Sorry, the... Dick, too busy reading. Yeah, you're too busy <laughs> reading the works of Plato and Aristotle. Yeah. It bugs you so much. You okay. hate it. Maddox will love this. The iPhone 6 outsells every other phone on the market. If you own an iPhone, move up three spaces. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, why don't you do some facts? Or, you know what? Throw this fucking board game away. Burn it. Why don't you do some research? That's not true. The iPhone 6, the iPhone right. 6 model itself, if you're just looking at phone models, but Androids far outweigh every other phone on the market. I think that was something Dick said. Yeah. What? That fact. Or oh, that, that was a quote from Dick? Yeah, I think yeah. it was a oh, quote. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. That, that is what you said. Yeah, that's funny. Anyway, Dick. What are your solutions? My solutions are satellites and temperance. My solutions are Ronald Reagan and the superhero stance. <laughs> What's the difference? <laughs> Use them together. See you next month. <laughs> Who won this game? Me. I'm, in, I'm ahead. The game's on pause, man. <laughs> no. I'm going to win this game. Do you want to go one more round? One more round. To see, I might go back. Yeah, right. great. Angelo's mom calls you gay. Hey, 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 it's my turn. Uh, so, okay, here, this is yeah, yours okay. then. Well, no, you already picked that. I'm going to pick this one. Here we go. Someone from the audience yells to you, zipper. You look down and realize your fly is down. Move back one space. Fuck. 
You got a drinking card. I got a drinking card. Great. That's uh, that was a reference to me in an improv show one time when I was doing a monologue on stage, and someone from the audience yelled out the suggestion "zipper." And I didn't realize what they were talking about until a week afterwards because oh, the pants God. that I wore at the time were buttoned and the buttons were really hard to put together, so I never buttoned it. Social, everyone have a sip of beer. Mm. And here's a quote from you, Dick. Way it says, you. maybe I think I'm a lot smarter than I really am. <laughs> I, was in pers- I was doing an impression of a guy when I said that. Maybe you- I think I'm a lot smarter than I am. <laughs> you put off Christmas shopping until it's too late, move back a space because you had to go to the mall like a fucking idiot. Was that you or me? Uh, that was not a quote, but oh. we did have Christmas presents yeah. as a problem on the show. Yeah, read mine. All right. More girls become engineers to prove the neo-feminists wrong about sexism. Move up two spaces. Oh, God, you know what that means, Maddox. You Hate are mail. dead last no, on that, this game. You well, lose the game of the biggest problem. Well, here's the thing. Which is accurate because you are the lowest ranking problem on the show. <sighs> Dick, here's the thing. We start, the start square on this board game is the bar, right? And uh-huh. the end is the studio. So uh-huh. I'm closest to the bar. I think I win. Well. Yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Congratulations. Wait, are we playing this game backwards? No, no. It says here the start. Uh, uh, the we bar started is the start. at the start. I don't know. Yeah, it says here, started the bar. All right. That's where we started, and we ended the studio. Uh, that's, a, that's a huge fuck-up, guys. We started the studio and ended the bar. It's true. Yeah. You need to reverse that on the next uh, next version of this game. Thanks, call the cops. I don't give a fuck. This message is actually for Sean. Sean, even if you really don't like your, uh, your problem, and I hate to bring this up like a couple episodes later, and I'm sure other people won't shut the fuck up about it, but... Really, man, I, I have been, li- okay, this kind of goes to everybody, I've been listening to the podcast since, like, the first episode, it's been great, and honestly, I have been heavily considering buying the bonus episodes, oh. and I think that uh, you guys should add, a, like, an extra segment to bonus episodes, and if you did, I would actually consider buying the bonus episodes, and that'd be Sean either bringing in a problem or a solution, like, even if it's like a, even if it is a shitty problem or a shitty solution, I, w- I would legit just go ahead and just buy one just because he, again, seems to be the voice of reason on the no. show, uh, added with your guys' energy and, and potential autism, then I'd totally consider <laughs> buying that. <laughs> what an asshole. Sean, that's how to poorly make a point. That's what a poorly made point sounds like. Yours sounded great. Yeah. I hide my psychosis well. Oh, well, not that well. 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 <laughs> <laughs>